They started talking in here. Why are you talking in the Q&A? It's a question. It's like talking in the, in the questions game in improv class. God. Hello, everyone. My name is ProPoku, and welcome back to another episode of Noob N.A. It's been a couple of months, and to start this off right, there's a question from Amagama. Why? Well, there weren't a lot of questions, so I let it go another month to give us more stuff. And another question from Suwako. How? And they thought they were going to be clever. Well, you see, I'm the boss. I can do whatever the hell I want on this channel. Yeah. It's good. Uh, you got questions, I got answers. Let's just jump right into it, because some of these are actually, like, I don't know how to answer them. Which, I, uh, frankly, is probably the, the way we're supposed to do this, I guess. It's recording. Always have to check it's recording. Okay. Uh, first question. First real question, third question. I guess. This is for Snowbear. When you get your prepaid postcard, who are you writing to and why? Apparently Canada Post is doing this thing where they gave free postcards during the pandemic and stuff like this. I gotta be honest with you, I don't... Outside of Twitch, I don't really know many people out... out like, like that I would send a postcard to even then. Like, I don't know. The, the only person I can really send a postcard to lives far away from me would be my, my cousin in British Columbia. But, I mean, she would actually like that because she is a big fan of anything that existed before the 1970s. So, probably her. See how she's doing. I mean, I, I, I could text her, but I mean, postcard could be a nice surprise. She'd probably treasure it, put it in a, in a picture frame, and then it, it would exist there until I show up, I don't know, 10 years from now. I'm getting texts. Excellent. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, probably, probably my cousin. I thought of some other people, like some celebrities and stuff with like this, but I'm just like, wouldn't it just be weird? I mean, they, they talk about cold calling and, and stuff like that. But... Yeah, we're good. Uh, next question. From Broken, if you could travel anywhere in the world outside of Canada, where would you go and why? <sighs> Remember the thing about me? I don't like moving. I don't really like going anywhere. I don't... I, I like Canada. It's... It, I like my home. I mean, I like going outside of my home. It's pretty to go look in scenic places. If you could get me there without me having to go over the ocean? On a plane or a boat? Like, if I could levitate. Uh, or drug me up real good so I don't know where I am. Because I am not a very happy person when it comes to travel. Uh... Probably Italy, as stupid as that sounds because my family's Italian, but I, 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 like the places that I would go would be to visit super scenic lands. So I know like the Netherlands is pretty scenic. Switzerland, like it'd be cool to see some of the cool, like see some of the mountains. That'd be very awe-inspiring. It'd be cool to see the Vesuvius as well. Um, I don't know, it's just something about giant bodies of water or just giant mountains that make me happy. Forests are cool from above, but I mean, that requires me having to go above, and guess what, I can use a mountain for that. Uh, would I ever go up there? No, I've heard about the very narrow corridors that buses drive on, where literally the wheel and, there's the dehumidifier, the wheel and the edge essentially are kissing the entire time you go up the mountain. I'm not about that, I like being safe. So probably, it's just anywhere scenic. Honestly, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't think about this. I, I feel bad for my girlfriend if one day we get married. That's an if. Uh, it's like one of those guarantee but ifs, but I'm not talking about that here. Um, if we were to go somewhere, she wants to travel the world. I'm just like, you know what? I got Google Maps for that. I'm lame, and she could take anybody she wants on those trips, make it her time away from me that she needs no but yeah probably anywhere with a really nice mountain view or like lake view or something like that i don't know i'm i'm very very admittedly uh uncultured when it comes to around the world i don't know a lot of what places got i know there are very pretty places and i'd love to go see all of them but i don't know <laughs> if that is nothing definitely nothing urban right like i would go visit some really popular cities that have like good tourist sites and stuff like that, but like staying in there, no. I very much like staying in more of the rural, believe it or not, uh, like staying in the more rural hotel, like like hotels away from the cities and stuff like that, because it just gets too busy, right? I gotta be on the outskirts. Uh, not not. I'm I'm very much a suburban guy, <coughs> and I very much 
uh, I can appreciate the different zones, but I'm very, I, I don't like being in the middle of the action. So, whatever that adds up to, there's your answer. Um, from Officer DK, which of your Nuzlocke extra rules is your favorite to run? That's a tough one, because that makes me feel like I have to flex the numerous Nuzlocke rules that I do over at twitch.tv slash burpokadoop. But... I've really been enjoying the reserve lock because I think it gives me a wider breadth of Pokemon to play with. Uh, it, it feels much, it feels way better to be like, okay, this team has to beat this level threshold and these teams have to make up for it and beat those level thresholds. It could be a bit of a grind sometimes with the speed of buttons, not too bad. But reserve lock has been essentially feeding me the majority of my happiness. Uh, when it comes to challenges, there are many challenges that I enjoy. Like, like I can't even say level lock because that's just something I run nonstop. Uh, like color and type lock, like they're all enjoyable. But like the ones that I that I think get my mind working the most, and by that I mean an extra piece of gray matter is flexing while it's happening because I I already put a lot of thought into every single nose lock that I do, uh, except for the times that I don't. But I mean that's 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 a different story. But yeah, for me, probably the reserve lock, which is basically you have to split your catches up into Team 1 and Team 2. You have to switch that every single gym. Uh, I should have led with that. But it's just cool. You, you get to play with more Pokemon. It actually makes you... Because usually in my Nuzlocke, I, I, gen, I generally just run three or four mains, unless I have the EXP share Gen 6 and up, and then I end up just dumping the rest unless something dies, and I go and grind that up. The reserve lock actually means now you need multiple carries, and then at the end of it, we have to bring three representatives or one to three representatives from both teams so if you're grinding you have to make sure that you're not just going to have this super weird like four water core that you're all carrying with it almost brings it together too at the end right because everything is leveled up so you don't have to feel like one team is going to be lower because they end at level seven or end at gym seven versus gym eight depending on the game of course but it just feels like hey the team's together you know you've assembled this avengers level squad that can uh that can work together you just have you have an entire arsenal of course you have to keep all the representatives from one team alive so technically you have five lives because if all of team one or all of team two die then you lose the run so it's just like it has a lot of implications and it has a lot of it has that little bit of like you have to get through the early game and then late game were these the right choices if not you have to start grinding them up when you get to use them so i i think reserve adds quite a bit of flavor to uh to nuzlocke's of late so yeah, I'm gonna stick with Reserve Lock. There are some fun ones. I'd like to. I I am actually going through the process of revamping some of the older runs that have kind of been replaced by rules that we generally use all the time now, anyways. Uh, and also ones that are just kind of like this is a pointless restriction. Let's let's repurpose said restriction. So like Learn Lock, Aggro Lock. I think is gonna no Aggro Lock's okay. Um, Learn Lock. Uh, what am I working on? Learn Lock. Klutz Lock, Titan Lock, those need working with. Just because, like, they're just X, they don't work well on it. Shift Lock is actually going to get a little bit of a different face, too. Uh, of course, you'll only know this if you're on my channel, but, I mean, if, you, if you're interested, you know, I do a lot of Pokemon Challenge runs. I highly recommend you check out my Twitch channel, because that's where you can get all the information. It's very easy to access, so, yeah. Cool. All right, next question from Broken. Which generation is my favorite to randomize? You know, I'm a type of guy where the more the better, the more the merrier. Uh, Gen 7 is really, really funny because of the totem pokes. Uh, it just has a lot of opportunities for a lot of Pokemon to show up all over the place. Obviously, most Pokemon. It's it's hard for me to say because each one has its own unique charm. Gen 1, you could be fighting 90 Sand Slashes, but Gen 7, you could be fighting a totem scatter bug that calls in an, an Ultra Necrozma type thing. So, you know, it's... It's uh, now with the with the ZX Rando, probably Gen 7, although, uh, you know, Gen 6 used to have a lot with the PK3DS Rando that we could use because, you know, more shiny chance. Only Gen 7 can have shiny chances on trainers now. Uh, you can't really play around with as much as you were able to before uh, if you use something that's just more convenient, which I do. I use convenience over, over you know, there's a little bit more flavor you can add. Today's the, today's theme of the video is the word flavor. Just the word. Not not the actual flavor. Just the word flavor. Flavour. Um, but yeah, probably seven. Uh, if you were to ask me which gen I've been enjoying the most in terms of challenge, Gen 5 has really been proven to be kicking my ass. Uh, and I'm okay with that because Gen 5 is a very difficult nuzlocke. I've been trying to piece together 
you know, experiences for beginners versus diff versus uh, more hardcore rando Nuzlocke players and more and more Gen 5 is like inching up on the scale of difficulty, especially with level restrictions. I always do it based on level restrictions. Gen 5 most certainly keeps you in your place and makes you have to play the uh, the most efficiently. Yeah. Yeah. Next question. From not Skeletor, why is Goose Geese but Moose isn't Meese? Because Meese is a stupid word. Who calls it Meese? Why would you call it Meese's? It's almost as bad as Moose's. Meese sounds like you're just saying mice wrong. Like, like you got something that pinched you after you were trying to say mice. I don't know, man. It's English. English is dumb. English doesn't have much logic to it. It's it's goose, geese, moose, and moose. It's it's and I mean, frankly, do you really want more than one moose in the same location? If you have to figure out what more than one moose is in a cluster, you're probably in the wrong location, and you need to start running because one moose can take down an entire country. Imagine what happens when you put a cluster of them together. I don't know what a what a what a group of moose actually is called. I it, it, I just call it a murderer moose because you know, like crows, except way worse. So <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Uh, and then a follow-up question from Snowbear, and why is Ox Oxen, but Box isn't Boxen? Um, because Boxen is once again just a really lazy way of saying the word boxing. I don't know, it's English. I, go, go dig up the Rosetta Stone, or whatever the hell they have the Rosetta Stone right now, and dig up the Rosetta Stone, because we buried it after we finished English, clearly, because we are just... <laughs> <laughs> we learned it. We're just like, we don't need the representation anymore. We don't know how to, we don't even know how to translate. Just, just put it back in the grid. But, um, yeah. I, I don't know. It's, it's kind of just that, that English thing. It's just, it's just that thing that English does, uh, where it has rules that are extremely complex. I'm sure there's some syntax related answer, but I'm, I'm a phys ed geography teacher in high school and I tutor language and math. My, my students don't need to learn why it's ox. It's oxen, but not boxen. They just need to learn that it's oxen and boxes. <laughs> they need to learn that first before we can start getting into the deep philosophical discussion with that. So, yeah. Yeah. Question for Sagging Rufus. <laughs> why is it? Why is the saying, never look a gift horse in the mouth? Who is looking into the mouth of a horse except for horse dentists? That's a good question. I, I don't actually know why you would look any animal really in the mouth. Let's be real. Unless you are a dentist or a vet or, or someone who cares for animals as a profession or, or just cares deeply for your animal. You're just like open wide cat and see what's in there. But, uh, you know, maybe maybe there's just somebody who, who maybe because the problem is it becomes an inclination. It kind of becomes like that black hole, that sort of a lure where you're like, ooh, what's in here? You know where you just see that cave in a, in a video game? You're like, I gotta, I gotta discover where this is. Then you discover it's a troll cave because you're playing Valheim. Um, maybe that's why they're just trying to stop you from being baited by your own human curiosity. Uh, I, I can imagine this was designed for some good reason. I'm, I'm sure there's some historical reference to this, and I decided not to look it up before asking and answering this question. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that's pretty much it. That's all I got. Yep, uh, question for Broken Bird Alive. What is your current favorite episode of the Pro Gamma Raz cast? It's been too long for me to answer that. Uh, I mean, saying the one with butt funneling is, is too easy because that's in almost every episode that even made it into the new <laughs> It's just always, it's omnipresent. It just never goes away. My favorite episode, you know, let me look up the episodes real quick. Let me, let me see. Cause I'll know by the, I'll, I'll know by the, um, oh God, do I even have, uh oh, nope, no, nope, uh oh, uh oh. Have they not even, put, wait, what is this? I don't even know what this site is. We use that site, Gamma, you're a god. Oh, I never, I never did the, uh, I never did the thing for episode 40. Man, it's been four months? Wow. It's actually been four months since we've done this. Honestly, probably the one where I found out that JRPG didn't mean junior RPG. Gotta be honest with you, that, that caught me completely off guard. I, I didn't know anything about that. 
Or the one where we just literally had nothing to do. I never did this, the thing for episode 28. Fuck. I'm just, I'm just reminiscing how I failed my job twice here. Um, either that or we literally had nothing to talk about. Uh, what was this about the venomous animals? Horse-sized duck punch was probably a really good one. Carnivorous koi fish uprising. That was interesting. We were talking about the death of Twitch Sings. Uh, Raz J. Happer Hackerman. Gamma is a moose. I don't even remember what this one's called. The one with the what? Oh, yeah. That's the one where he put it. Yeah, oh, yeah. It's the one with the multiple cuts. That's right. That's why it was called that. Right. Yeah, that's just prop. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, some of these are really good. They all, they all had their own gem, right? Either for myself, Gamma, or Raz. We all had our own, like revelation or unique thing that would happen in it so mine is probably the one with the junior rpgs i mean japanese rpg i mean junior RPG, i don't know that one probably i can't tell you which one that is but that's the way it's gonna be so yeah but another question for broken what are your thoughts on me thinking of new questions while editing last month's noob and a video you're doing a good job broken you're working with a guy who doesn't know how to take proper breaks and scripts that i don't write and uh edit things to make them move smoothly despite the fact that i'm like hey broken can you make this a little more smoothly please <laughs> broken i need you to make this make sense put good cuts and good transitions and i'm gonna give you the hardest possible time with that with me existing and never shutting up and taking breaks because i'm not good at that when i start doing that it becomes in inauthentic freaking english like that sort of thing i think you're doing a great job i think i think in the comments section we need to have a a a a what do we got here uh it would be a an o double was that front slash double front slash an applause for broken's work on the YouTube. He's been doing a lot of great work. It's It's been good to have a video editor for myself, but I think I, he has been improving significantly and doing really, really well uh, with the videos as of late, especially, but like just in general, you can see uh, it, it's, it's cool to be able to work with somebody like this because again, it's like, you know, they always say do this stuff on your own, save yourself some money, but I mean, Broken has saved my literal sanity and has improved just the breadth of ex of content experience with his knowledge so you know it's 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 worth every every penny put into it um and i mean it's not a we're, we're both very good at working together we, we bounce ideas off each other once in a while and uh he like it's just it's good man so what am i thinking i'm thinking i i hope to continue to plan to find more money to pay for more videos so we can make more content together yeah that's what i'm thinking a uh, question from officer dk how many pokemon are too many for a game of battleships never enough there's never enough man see the problem is we have been spoiled lately because of the extra life thing where we have had 802 pokemon in a single pokemon game that we have been bad doing battleships on so i think i've reached that point where if i could do it uh where we where we we could do it together uh and just play battleships and spend 30 40 hours on it i i i, I don't think you go back from that i mean i think doing anything smaller just kind of feels weirder you know like that thing could just end in 20 30 minutes i i i need my 30 hour battleships so there's there's no there's no restrictions there that question is from a couple of months ago i bet you officer has different opinions on that <laughs> now yeah uh question for snow bear what's my age again you're either a year younger or two years older than me, or a year older than me. You're, you're near my age. I know you're making a Sum 41 reference? Sum 41? Is it Sum 41? Something like that. Oh. Uh, old enough. Question from Anish. Uh, a, 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 a plethora of questions from Anish. What's the most memorable moment of my stream so far? Why do we gotta get sappy, dude? I... <sighs> That's tough, man. You know I don't pick... You've known me long enough to know I don't pick favorite moments. I don't think about this stuff. I'm really bad at that. I, I think it's both a blessing and a curse that I don't think that way because... I... I make a lot of memories, but then I forget a lot of memories. And that's just me. Ask my girlfriend, like... Ask what my favorite moment of... of, of 
of uh, my relationship in the past six years has been. And it's like when I asked her out, it's it's a cop out answer, but it's also like it's the truth, right? I just every moment is special to me. So like for me, my most memorable moment of my stream so far is just being able to sit there and say thank you for everybody for keeping this at bare minimum sustainable to a very tiny extent so that I could keep doing this for you. That's that's for me. Uh, something specific. Probably that's some good ginger ale today. Honestly? It's probably the extra life. Probably extra life 2020 hitting to hitting the $2000. Like when we hit two thousand dollars, I think I think it was Millie that we hit two thousand and two thousand five hundred dollars. I can't remember. We hit the two K, and then we kept going forward with that because that was that was, like like we had done so well compared to every other, um, we had done so well compared to every other extra life. Like like the, the bar has just been set way high now. Uh, and of course, the only person putting pressure on myself to continue to make that work is me uh because i'm 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 personally not a believer of you always have to do better every single time because that to me then feels more like a, a flex and a high score that that turns it more into a business aspect than just the fun of raising money for sick kids hospital so but yeah honestly it just just it was a very i i think all of extra life 2020 was extremely successful i love i love the format we had so many people come on i hope to get those people on again and more and and just make it a memorable moment because i think it's 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 a very special time of the year to not only just raise money for the kids but just like it, it brings people together it's kind of the dream that i want where i've always wanted to be on a stream team that i could do that with right like that's that's kind of one thing I want to look into eventually is this, like how can I be on a stream team how can I get like this kind of like you know they have those like mini communities we have like six or seven people will all just have these amalgamated communities I would love to have something like that I think it'd be really cool um and it's not even because it is it's just like I, I always I'm always very vocal about not ever being in many jobs where I'm, I feel like I can make a lot of friends at the job and feel good about it and 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 feel like I want to talk to people outside of the job, but then if I want to talk job, like they're cool with talking job, they're not miserable with their stuff, or they're just like, yeah, it was work, eh, but bleh, right? Like I, I feel like I work with super passionate people, and I want those. I like having those types of friends uh, where we can just talk shop, but also just just talk anything and just enjoy it, right? Like I think that'd be really really cool to have. So extra life for me was. Uh, like extra life 2020 like the, the whole experience of extra life starting in you know my friend's basement back in 2015 to now where we're just running it out of my my my, my basement but having a three-day marathon and then having like four months of events uh just intermittently in between other pieces of content and stuff like that like i think it's i think that was the most fun i've had with charity and i hope to continue to make that better for people and make that better for sick kids so that that's probably the biggest accomplishment on the channel and very memorable but i mean there's so many right you can go from po pro pokeball you can go to the time uh finishing the uh, the nuts sparse only nuz or speed run uh you could go back to getting affiliates right like I'm, I'm sure yeah it's easy to get affiliate but back when it was in 2017 man like that was special to hit that point right so the psycho raid that actually led to a lot of new friends on the channel that was a that was the biggest one i've ever had uh still to date so yeah too much too much to recount like i said i'm not good at recounting i'm just good at at at, at being ever appreciative because that's all i can be is ever appreciative so it, it's been such a wild ride it's been like uh, i when i start saying like that's when i'm running out of words to describe how i feel which is a good thing Okay, next question from Anish. How much magma can an amagamma magma if an amagamma can magma magma? Seven. Next question. What does it feel like when you're at Chuck in a little over 40 minutes? Never been to Chuck in a little over 40 minutes. Didn't even know that was possible. Probably is my fastest Chuck because uh, Anish is referring to uh, Pokemon Crystal Bingo speedrunning. I think my fastest Chuck ever was like 56 minutes. Because I remember that was the one you told me it was on Randomania, actually. It was in an event. 
and I, my timer said like 59 and then you told me it's like oh yeah but the timer's delayed or like the timer in game runs faster so you know it said 59 minutes in game but because i sub hour chuck was always the dream right it's always the dream to have a sub hour chuck but then it ended up being like 55 56 minutes so i don't know what it's like to have a little over 40 minutes uh pick my poison death by snow bear roms or ox locks or ox locked snow bear roms uh snow bear roms are perfectly fine those are my element i love playing really long and obnoxious runs uh if you watched my full item rando a couple weeks ago you know exactly i was i was peachy by the end of it yeah so i don't mind snow bear roms Ox runs just become very long and drawn out, and you gotta remember that a shelter is a ghost type, and snow bear roms are perfectly acceptable. I think people just hate on it because they don't like being slow in a speed run when you're playing a rando, so guess what? Randomizer sometimes gonna tell you you're gonna be slow today. Sorry. Uh, question for Broken. Not a question, but Anish just made an ending nightmare for me. I just wanted to point that out. Now, a question for Anish. How so? Uh, Broken knows how so. We all know how so. We know Broken's gonna go back and grab a bunch of clips and now go back into the editing here and post a bunch of clips from Extra Life. And I'm putting more expectations on him. That's, that's, that's mean of me. I'm sorry. That's not gonna work. Question from Anish again. What in Australia scares me the most? All of it. There is nothing in Australia that is redeeming grace because everything there is deserving to kill you and trying to kill you. I don't know what you, you've never explained one thing to me that is pleasant about Australia. The heat wants to kill you, nature wants to kill you, like everything there wants to kill you. What is redeeming about Australia? <laughs> well, noob, we're completely peaceful and nobody enters our borders. That's not redeeming. <laughs> that doesn't redeem anybody. So, uh, yeah. I, I, it just, just, I, I, I know that the bugs are really scary. I've always seen pictures of, of spiders and, and like really big things. Cause I complain about, you know, centipedes that are like this big. I have small hands, but like they're this big in my basement. I'm just sitting there going like, wow, imagine I went to Australia and one just pulls a knife on me from each of its a hundred legs. And then, yeah, that's, that's, that looks like a really cool monster to build in a game. A centipede with a hundred knives, but. I, I don't want that to exist in anything but a video game or, or a comic book that I'll never read. So, just everything. Uh, another question. Can you commentate yourself, I'm assuming, over your own commentary? Believe it or not, I don't know. I've never tried to. I... I... I don't, I don't know. I like I've, I've watched my own commentary. Like we were just watching my, uh, the Pro Pokeball playback um, from the tournament just started this year, and I like I'm the type of person where I believe if you're really gonna be a commentator, if you're gonna be somebody who's gonna want to learn how to speak coherently and speak in a in a system that you like, you need to be comfortable with your own voice. And there's sometimes where I can't listen to myself. There's sometimes where it's just like. Man, I actually hit the cringeometer over there and and made this a nightmare for myself to listen to. But that's also because I'm really tough on myself. There are just like certain lines that I say that I know a lot of people love. Like they love the cheesy dad jokes or the, or the one-liners and stuff like that. So I do that for people. You can't tell me that I don't do things for you guys because, you know, I'm not going to dress up in a banana suit and start singing the Pokemon theme song. You cannot pay me enough money for that. You can ask that. The answer is you can't pay me enough money to do that. Um... Or, you know, yeah. But, I mean, I could commentate over myself. The thing is, though, commentary, commentating over my own commentary would be overly meta, and I'd have to listen. It's really hard to commentate over people talking. If you're asking, like, if I could play myself back and talk over myself talking, no. I'm still... That's very tough for me. That's why co-commentary is kind of somewhat sometimes difficult for me, uh, especially if the person doesn't know, like if we're not on the same page, it's not just the other person, it's a team thing, right? So if the team, if, if myself and the other person, we don't know when we're gonna be stopping and talking and stuff like that, I'm generally good at picking up when people are gonna start and stop talking and I have kind of that timing in my mind, but I also think that my timing is very much one of those, you have to wait for my inflections. You have to wait for me to finish my point. There is going to be a breath or a pause after I'm done talking so that you understand um, when exactly... I'm just checking I didn't break anything. Good. Uh, when exactly... You can go. It might sound very... 
I think of it as more leadership than hogging the mic, because I'm just a guy that doesn't shut up. And I want to keep talking if I make stuff, if I, if I say the wrong thing, so. that Yeah, that's just how it goes. Uh, from Broken, how do you kill your boredom with a knife or Chinese water torture? Well, considering I've never tried either of them, and I don't know how to really answer this question, I, I kill my boredom with kindness via video games and talking to my girlfriend and sometimes my friends when they're not asleep by 7 p.m. That's a lie. 9 p.m. But, yeah. I, I I mean, when when COVID's done, I'll definitely be going out a lot more. Like, like biking. That'll be on the... Because now that I can actually bike and, and, and try and get more exercise. And right now, it's like walking before tutoring and, and stuff like that. But... Or working on my games, right? That's stuff that I'm always working on. I'm never I'm never relaxing. I'm really bad at relaxing. I think I've said that so many times now. It, it should be... It almost sounds like a cry for help at this point. Where I'm like, please show me how to relax without me being, like, super whiny and babyish. Because even babies know when to go to sleep because they get tired. For me, I just don't stop. I'm really, really bad at killing boredom. If anything, I had more work. And then I'm like, please make it stop. Like, but noob, you gave that to yourself. I know. Ah. Uh, question for Vanish. How many effects go into these Q&A videos? As many as Broken feels like it. Uh, let's see. Another question for Vanish. If you had a stream deck solely for sounds, what sounds from the stream's history would be at your active disposal? Oh, man. Um, I didn't see these questions, actually, so I'm not ready for these, per se. Sounds from stream's history. Probably the one where I was like sitting on the mic going Duh. back when you know there was just some really stupid RNG going on. Uh, I would also do that one clip where I was complaining when people were complaining about the national decks being cut in Gen Eight. It's actually a clip that I can that I still have and saved for a rainy. It's called it's called Save for a Rainy Day. And anytime I hear the Pokemon community complain about it, I will just play that all the time. Everyone's like, excuse me, but Naganadel is a little bit too strong offensively and speed-wise. I need you to nerf it to at least base 120 base power because otherwise it's becoming too much. Also, the oversaturation of mythicals and as legendaries in my runs are ridiculous. Also, are you telling me I can only use partial features because I don't pay for Pokemon Home? You fucking Neanderthals. Do you understand that I have to raise seven kids and teach them all how to become Pokemon masters while I'm out here trying to work seven jobs so I can pay for that one guy who's raising three of my Pokemon at a time for $5 an hour? That's what you sound like. Because that is, like, one of the best clips to define the absolute whiny, bitchy nature of the Pokemon community sometimes. That side of the Pokemon community, because we're not that side of that Pokemon community. We have opinions, we just don't shit on other people for liking things. So... <laughs> but yeah, definitely, definitely the absolute stunned, uh, the, the, uh, talking about people paying for child welfare, or paying for child services while, what's it, no, what was it? Paying for babysitting their poke or their their children, while having to farm up EVs and IVs. I can't even remember. I it, it it's something like that. It's good enough. That's the point. If I could play it, I'm just gonna do that. So, I th definitely those two other noises. Just sounds. I don't know. Those are two of the most memorable sounds. Yeah, there's probably a lot, but those are the ones that come to mind, which means they must be important to put on the stream deck. Are you getting me a stream deck? Answer that, Anish. Thanks. Uh, Broken, can you believe that Animal Crossing New Horizons has been out for a year already? Yes, because I haven't played it for about the past three or four months, and I have to set up for Extra Life's uh, Animal Crossing thing. You're going to listen to that and freak out because you're a part of that, right? Uh, yeah, I, I mean, time has flown. I'm usually not a guy to say that, right? I, I usually just take time as it is and go from there but yeah it's been it's been a year i mean i think the thing that stuns me more is pokemon's been out for two years like we're almost we're almost coming up to two years on sword and shield that doesn't feel like it's been like that so yeah that's just yeah uh, and there's like a bunch of these questions that they put in here they're trying to make me answer all these and i'm just gonna i'm just gonna give you one of those metaphorical middle fingers and I'm not answering any of these. They're singing Bohemian Rhapsody, which will get me DMCA'd. Uh, a 
Okay, here's a question that's completely original and, and just built upon all the other Nubinays. How much wood could a woodchuck chuck if Gamma gave that woodchuck $100 to chuck wood? Well, I didn't look up the current prices of, of woodchucks to chuck, so I don't know what it would look like in the current market. I'm just going to stick with my normal answer and say seven. Uh, from Marie. Hi, Marie. Chrono Trigger when? Stop asking me. I'm not upset. Chrono Trigger when? When I have time. Uh, from Broken World when? When I go back to... Golden Sun. <laughs> when I go back to Golden Sun speedrunning and force Chocobos to have that wonderful time with me again. <laughs> uh, from Officer GK, which big bad boss in all gaming is the best at evil doing? Well, I mean... That's pretty straightforward. It's Ganondorf. Ganondorf is always successful in some way and then fails and just finds multiple timelines to be successful in. The man just never disappoints, right? If you're a Bowser fan, have you realized how many different ways Bowser is just royally messed up and literally in one of the games he just wanted a sky hot tub? Like, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I, just, I just find it funny. Um, so... Yeah, I just like Ganondorf. Ganondorf has so many cool uh, different things he's trying to do with timelines and stuff like that. So one time where I'm just like, man, I would actually like to read the timelines and see how he's making all this work. So that's just that's just my personal opinion. So, yeah. Uh, has a video game ever scared me? Yes. I don't know. I know you don't do horror games, but there has been ever been a moment in a non-horror game that freaked me out. No lie. Goma in Ocarina of Time. I did not play Ocarina of Time when I was a kid, I waited till I was like, okay, when I got the when I got the GameCube and then the the Zelda special disc thing, I was 15, and Goma still freaked me out because I hate spiders, right? I like looking at them behind glass, but dude, walking up to a giant fucking giant eyeball spider, that that as I remember being at my nonna's old old house, and my uncle would be sitting there playing Ocarina of Time, and I would hide behind the corner, just kind of like peeking out because I could not stand staring at Goma. Um, that thing scared the absolute bejesus out of me. Otherwise, a more contemporary thing, I, I, I had his name memorized because I looked at this question specifically because I was just like, I can't remember many games that scared me. Uh, Skies of Arcadia Pukey Boss. Whatever his name was. Sewer Boss. And Broken can put a picture of this thing up. Bleagok. There we go. Bleagok. This thing was goddamn nasty because one of his attacks is literally just puking out bile. It's called Putrid Bile, I think. And he just, like, literally pukes all over the floor. And there's skulls and everything like that. He poisons you. It's just like... And the worst... And uh, the great thing from the video game's perspective, as well as the, the creepy thing in that video game, was you have to run down a hallway, and you see him at the end of the hallway. And you're just like, nope. Or that's the same thing as Gomer, right? When you walk in, you just hear it, and you're going, okay, it's, there's no surprise factor here. It's not like... Uh, you're st you land on a bongo, and then bongo bongo's like, hello. No, they're just staring at you down the hallway like, you ready? I'm just like, no. <laughs> <laughs> there are a lot of things in skies that freaked me out as a teenager. I'm very jumpy. I'm not good with horror stuff. Um, but those are like the two memorable. I'm sure there's other games that have freaked me out. But like those are just, I, I remember being a teenager and just being like, I can't do this. This is really, this is really hard for me to play through. Um. But, like, Skies had some really creepy things all over the place. I think when I was thinking about this question, I think for me, the thing that gets me the most is when you have to approach them. It's not If they, if they surprise you, it's not so bad because then it's more about the surprise. But it's when they come out and, like, you have to, like, walk towards them. So, like, in Skies, when I had to fly towards the giant rock or I had to fly towards the squid or I had to go fly towards the giant friggin' boulder rolling over, and I'm just like, are you going to kill me? Because it's, then it's like that's when you get surprised and all of a sudden, you're dead! Like, that just feels bad and it's terrifying and then you're, like, super careful trying to approach it as you should be. But, yeah, staring down monsters I have to beat up just looking at them the whole time, I'm just like, yeah. Or those games where they're just sitting there and you know it's the boss and you just sit like a like like in Minish Cap where you're staring down the giant Octorok. That didn't freak me out, but you're just staring down like we know you're gonna have to beat you at some point. It's cool. You know, it would be creepier if it's just noises nonstop and then it drops on you. Yeah. So those are the most memorable to me, Marie. They're they're very it's gross. <laughs> Uh, from Sagging Rufus, do you consider red licorice blasphemy? <laughs> no. That's the only licorice I would ever eat. But I'm also a very basic, basic 
treats and 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 eating guy I, I i i know what i like and i just go from there so yeah i'm just i'm just you know that's that's it it's 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 very simply put uh i like red licorice i don't find other licorice tasty red licorice is fine i don't even eat red licorice that often so ain't blasphemous in this house uh, from a niche, what's the worst thing you ever got away with? Uh, the only thing I could talk about is something that I'm kind of proud of, but also not, because I eventually just told my parents about it. There was this vase that they got as a wedding gift, back when they were married, duh. And my sister and I were playing ball in the house, and I threw the ball really hard and broke the vase. And I was eight, nine, she was four, three, something like that. And I basically blamed it on her. And they believed me for like 20 years. To a point where we started talking about it. And then I'm just like, you know what? I'm 24, 5, something like that. I I, I feel like time has passed. Let's, let's just use the whole, you know, bygones be bygones. Time is done. And I'm like, yeah. You remember when to yell when we, when we, you know, for like 20 years, my sister was the one who broke it. No, it was me. We were playing ball in the house. I made her look terrible. That was the one that I actually, like, was conscious enough to get away with. Because the other one was, like, when I stole a Simba doll from Sears. But that didn't matter because I was, like, I don't know. <laughs> this is three, two. I went to go get a picture. I went to go to the photo booth to get pictures from, like, a professional photographer. I, my mom wanted some pictures. I just ended up walking out with it, and she looks at the back of the car and goes, what are you holding? I go, Simba! And, uh, yeah, that was, yeah, Simba backpack. Simba doll or Simba? No, it was Simba doll. You know? Funnily enough, if you go look in the picture, you can actually see me holding the doll that I stole. So, yeah. Baby me was very mischievous. I, I don't look forward to my own children having that on them <laughs> i don't know uh, i also have to answer the question well ivan's not around i don't have to answer that question all right final question from officer saw this one on reddit looks like a good one if it's from reddit we'll see i guess if you lived in a pokemon world or in the pokemon world which region would you live want to live in I think functionality all the time so the one that functionally works is is unova <laughs> because it's like the only thing that has everything connected and i'm not completely restricted going anywhere because you know if you think about it, you live in pallet town you literally live next to the ocean that can't be good during flooding season and, and then like you can't go anywhere without getting attacked by monsters uh at least living in Udova, i could go to multiple places i could live in Mbasa city and have everything connected stuff like that i guess you could say the same thing about saffron city in gen one but i mean those those people are thirsty so if i keep giving them drinks it's gonna be more expensive than i ever want it to be uh lots of scenery in unova that i really like both both from both games of course uh like like past unova or for future unova but I don't know, like, I'm not an island type of guy, so Alola wouldn't be good for me. Galar's pretty nice, though. Like, Galar has some really cool things going with it, and I do like my nature. So, Galar's good. Yorova's also very pretty for the for the nature. Like, like there's just... Literally, if, if Gen 3 is 7.8 out of 10 too much water, then Gen 6 is 7.8 out of 10 too many goddamn flowers, because they're everywhere. There's literally flowers everywhere. Like, develop the land a little bit. There's just flower bed into flower bed into flower maze. It's, ah, yeah. And, and then, just, then you just got, like, this rich man's mansion just sitting in the middle. Like, my puppy! So, yeah. Probably Unova, honestly. I can't really think of it. Like, like Unova or Galar. Those would be nice to live in. They've got they've got a good balance between urban and suburban and, and rural. And visit some nice places. Get some good food, right? Buy myself a Castelia cone, which is pretty nice. I don't know, just kind of have the, 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 the flavor of everything. I mean, so did Kalos, but again, flowers are everywhere. So, I can't help with that. Yeah, that's my answer. Yeah. Okay, that's the end of the video. Thank you very much for asking all those questions from everybody. Of course, if you'd like to drop some more questions, and you are, in fact, 
a sub, make sure you go over to my Discord, which is the link down below, and you can ask more questions for the next video. Thank you very much, and I'll see you on the next one. Have an excellent day, everybody, and peace.